The readings will now be given by Amanda from Missouri. The Bible Genesis In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Isaiah The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Genesis Noah was a just man, and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And God remembered Noah, and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. Psalms I am God, even thy God. Every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle, and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted. 
where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey, and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together, and lay them down in their dens. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou givest them they gather, thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever, the Lord shall rejoice in his works. Job Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. Revelation and every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, for ever and ever. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. All things are created spiritually. Mind, not matter, is the creator. Love, the divine principle, is the father and mother of the universe, including man. God is the life or intelligence which forms and preserves the individuality and identity of animals as well as of men. The true sense of being and its eternal perfection should appear now, even as it will hereafter. To sense, the lion of today is the lion of 6,000 years ago. But in science, spirit sends forth its own harmless likeness. God fashions all things after his own likeness. The decaying flower, the blighted bud, the gnarled oak, the ferocious beast, like the discords of disease, sin, and death, are unnatural. They are the falsities of sense the changing deflections of mortal mind. They are not the eternal realities of mind. It is the general belief that the lower animals are less sickly than those possessing higher organizations, especially those of the human form. This would indicate that there is less disease in proportion as the force of mortal mind is less pungent or sensitive, 
and that health attends the absence of mortal mind. A fair conclusion from this might be that it is the human belief and not the divine arbitrament which brings the physical organism under the yoke of disease. Error of thought is reflected in error of action. The continual contemplation of existence as material and corporeal, as beginning and ending, and with birth, decay, and dissolution as its component stages, hides the true and spiritual life and causes our standard to trail in the dust. If life has any starting point whatsoever, then the great I am is a myth. If life is God, as the scriptures imply, then life is not embryonic. It is infinite. An egg is an impossible enclosure for deity. All must be mind, or else all must be matter. Neither can produce the other. Animals and mortals metaphorically present the gradation of mortal thought, rising in the scale of intelligence, taking form in masculine, feminine, or neuter gender. The fowls, which fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven, correspond to aspirations soaring beyond and above corporeality, to the understanding of the incorporeal and divine principle, love. Spirit blesses the multiplication of its own pure and perfect ideas. From the infinite elements of the one mind emanate all form, color, quality, and quantity, and these are mental, both primarily and secondarily. Their spiritual nature is discerned only through the spiritual senses. The little fishes in my fountain must have felt me when I stood silently beside it, where they came out in orderly line to the rim where I stood. Then I fed these sweet little thoughts that, not fearing me, thought their food of me. Spirit diversifies, classifies, and individualizes all thoughts, which are as eternal as the mind conceiving them. But the intelligence, existence, and continuity of all individuality remain in God, who is the divinely creative principle thereof. God creates all forms of reality. His thoughts are spiritual realities. So-called mortal mind, being non-existent and consequently not within the range of immortal existence, could not, by simulating deific power, invert the divine creation and afterwards recreate persons or things upon its own plane, since nothing exists beyond the range of all-inclusive infinity in which and of which God is the sole creator. Mind, joyous in strength, dwells in the realm of mind. Mind's infinite ideas run and disport themselves. In humility, they climb the heights of holiness. The individuality created by God is not carnivorous as witness the millennial estate pictured by Isaiah. All of God's creatures, moving in the harmony of science, are harmless, useful, indestructible. A realization of this grand verity was a source of strength to the ancient worthies. It supports Christian healing and enables its possessor to emulate the example of Jesus and God saw that it was good. Love's ideas are subject to the mind which forms them. Christian science gives neither moral right nor mind 
to harm either man or beast. God is really all. Creation, evolution, or manifestation, being in and of spirit, mind, and all that really is, must be spiritual and mental. This is science and is susceptible of proof. That which he creates is good, and he makes all that is made.